Everybody, welcome to Chapter 2, Section 6 for Math 330. We are going to do numerical methods for solving a first order differential equations using a rung cut up method. So, uh, let's get started. So, what we have here is here's the idea behind our rung cut up method, just like we had the idea behind the Euler's method. Euler method and improved order method is that you got your differential equation and you got some initial condition. Just like before, it claims that the slope of the solution curve, we we have information about the slope of the solution curve, so we're going to use that, but in a little different strategy this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the, um, what is this called, the fundamental theorem of calculus is that if you integrate a derivative between uh, for dx between these two points, you get the value of uh, the function at x of n plus 1 minus the value of the function at x of n. So we're going to use that idea. And uh, also using Simpson's rule for numerical integration, if you go back, I believe you've probably done this in... Uh, Calculus 2, you can go back and look it up, but what you're going to do is, this is Simpson's rule for numerical integration over these points. This is what we're going to get, where h is the uh, step size, or the distance between uh, x of n plus 1 and x of n. And so if you evaluate the derivative of x of n, 4 times evaluation of derivative x of n plus h divided by 2, and then evaluate the derivative at uh, x of n plus 1, you multiply it times h, divide by 6, and you get your integration. So what we're going to do for the run kind of method is we're going to take this 4 times this uh, derivative in the middle term, and we're going to split it up into two separate terms. Okay, so if we do that, and then we solve for the uh, future location of y, we get what we call the run cut -up method. So how are we going to generate this run cut -up method? Well, we have our function for the derivative, so I'm going to evaluate that at our known locations, at xn and yn. We're going to call that k1. Then I'm going to evaluate the second one, but not at uh, xn and yn, but we're going to evaluate it xn plus h divided by 2, and then use Euler's method to approximate uh, future prediction for what y should be using, uh, this time, the slope of k1 that we calculated earlier, and only going half the step size interval into the future. And then we're going to do it uh, one more time for the second one. We're going to call that k3. Again, only half a step size, but when I predict my future location for my y, I'm going to use the slope k2 this time. And then we're going to do it one more time in the future, but except here, I'm going to do one full step size into the future in x, and one full step size into the future in y, but in this time, making my prediction using Euler's method, I'm going to use slope k3 that we calculated over here. So if we put them all in here, I get this is my function for the run cut method. So um, it's a little more uh, complicated. You have four more function calls than we had before, but uh, we get answers back for accuracy. So let's look at our problem one on page uh, 113 here. And we've got our derivative of y with respect to x is equal to a minus y. And our initial condition at x equals 0, y has to equal 2. And we have an exact solution for this one in this case. So let's implement uh, the run cut of method. So there's I calculate my k1. Here's how I'm going to calculate my k2. Here's how I'm going to calculate my k3. And here's how I'm going to calculate my k4. And then I put it in to make my prediction. So, um, here's what I come out with with my numerical solution using a step size of h equal 0.25. And so, if you look at this, um, 
here's our exact solution too. So if we go to our first time step, we are accurate to four decimal places here. Wow, in one step. And then we go one more, and we are again accurate to four decimal places. Um, how did I calculate these slopes? Well, I calculated using this function. In, our, in, a, in this case, f of x and y is minus y. So I plug in uh, a minus 2 here for k1. And then I go over here to k2. Now, there's no x dependence in our derivative. So all I have to do is y. So I make a prediction of y by plugging in 2 plus uh, h divided by 2, which is actually... Uh, since h is a qu one quarter, this comes out to be one eight, and I multiply it times my function over here, my slope over here, which is minus two, and I get this slope. And then I do the same for three, except I use, for my prediction here, I use k2, and then I do the same for k4, uh, uh, k4, except again for my y prediction, I use k3 in a full step size. And then I average all these together in what's called a weighted average. I weight the middle two points, K2 and K3, with uh, twice as important than at the end points of K1 and K4. And this allows me to approximate this. Well, why do I have to go through all this work? Well, here is Euler's method. Right here we have predicted. It predicts. At x equals 0.5, our solution should be 1.125. And if we go with our exact solution over here, it's only accurate, right, to the first, not even the first decimal place. So let's look at improved Eulers. Now, when we get improved Eulers, at the same reason here, 0.5, now our solution is 1.22 here. And if we look at the exact solution, it's 1.21. So we're accurate to one decimal place. But now if we put in run cut out, look at this. My solution predicts 1.21309. And the exact solution is 1.21306. We're accurate to four decimal place, only using two steps into the future. So, you, yes, we get many more function calls, but we're much more accurate in a short, shorter steps into the future. So, that's the advantage of run kata. So, you're going to, uh, so if we look at the error of run kata, it's of, of the order of h to the fourth power. So, if we reduce h by a half, we're going to get it, uh, uh, much more accurate over here and we could and only doing two more time steps we're going to get a much better solution right, so using this method. Part of the homework requires you to do a, what's called a skydiver problem so I'm going to review that so we can help you set up your own problem. So we got this skydiver who's falling and they have the weight force pointing down and the uh, drag force or resistance drag force po pointing up. We're going to say positive is pointing down. And then uh, we are going to uh, set up uh, Newton's second law, the net force acting on our skydivers. It's weight force minus this uh, resistant force. And using our definitions that we've talked about before, our net force is equal to our mass of our uh, the skydiver times our acceleration. Our weight force is equal to the mass of the skydiver times the acceleration due to gravity. And this is the expression they give us for the uh, drag force, where A, B, and C are some constants, which uh, you get to determine. And we'll talk a little more about that a little bit later. And so the idea is to solve for the acceleration. And using our definition of acceleration, that it's the derivative of velocity, now we've got a first-order differential equation. And this is what you're going to solve numerically using the run cutter method. This is very difficult to solve analytically. So this is why we're using a run, the run cutter method. Now, um, let's talk about uh, these constants in here. 
So, um, the book, or the chapter 2, section 6, example 3, is one of these problems, and they use uh, a coefficient A is this value, a coefficient B is this value, and a coefficient C is this value. And then G we can use is 9.81. Uh, the units of this is always meters per second squared for G. And then, well, what is M? M is going to be your own mass in kilograms. Uh, so you have to figure that out. About uh, one kilogram is about two pounds. So you can make that as an estimate there. And then um, you need to predict what your future velocity is. You can make an assumption that uh, you start up high, but we're going to call that zero Y position, and your velocity should be zero when you start. And we're going to make an assumption that the acceleration is changing very slowly over time. So this allows us to predict how fast you're going to fall, knowing what your past Y position is, your past velocity, which is what you get for solving this. And your delta T is you're going to be your time step. Usually I call that H. Uh, usually we call this H. Delta T is equivalent to H because we're stepping into the future now. And then uh, we have one half a, what is A? Well, this expression right here is A. And so you can calculate that at A n, knowing the velocity, V in there, V in there, and V in there. And then you multiply times your step size, your step size squared. So uh, what, we're gonna, what you're going to have to do is when you create this problem of yours, you're going to analyze it. You're going to um, uh, want to... Uh, set something up, a chart up like this. You might even want to have a chart of time to calculate how your free fall is, how much time it takes you to free fall this distance. Um, so, uh, at your initial conditions are going to be y equals zero, v equals zero, and your acceleration will be g. And then you make your calculation for y of n using this, because I have v of n and a of n. And then how are you going to predict this? Well, you're going to predict this by uh, your A of N plus 1 is going to be predicted by Euler's method. Or not Euler's method. The run cut a method now. So you're going to have to calculate all your K1s, your K2s, your K3s, your K4s. And then uh, once you have this V of N plus 1, you can plug it back in here and get your A of N plus 1. And then at N1, you've gone one time step, so your time will should be T. And then we want you to pick, uh, figure out how long it takes you to fall a certain height in skydiving. You can also look at how fast it takes you to get to terminal velocity. And again, we'll say the terminal velocity is when this function, your acceleration equals zero. So you can solve for the value of V that happens. You're going to get... Um, three solutions for the velocity that happens. I think uh, one should be, re at least one should be real, the rest will be uh, probably complex, and we won't use it that much. So, alright, so there's all your solutions for the uh, skydiver problem, or a way to attack the skydiver problem. I'll see it. I'll see you in class on Wednesday, and remember, don't forget to bring your computer.